Today we're going to be talking about everything that I pack for a long distance motorcycle trip. Everything that I pack generally never really changes, whether it's a two or three night trip upwards to, you know, a 10 month trip. I'm always packing roughly the same amount of gear. And part of the reason for that is everything I'm carrying with me is what I consider a need. I like to be self-sufficient, have everything I need to camp, uh, cook, you know, do anything that I need to do. Uh, the other part of that is I typically only carry about three days supply of clothing. And the reason for that is I'm not a big fan of carrying around, you know, weeks worth of dirty clothes packed away in the bike. So we're going to jump into everything that I carry with me for a long distance motorcycle trip right up to this. Hey everyone, I'm Tim and this is my channel FTA Adventures and like I said, we're going to be talking about everything that I have packed with me for a long distance motorcycle trip. Let's go ahead and start with what I'm riding as far as my riding gear. Now I am wearing the Forma Adventure boots, which I am absolutely thrilled with. I really, really love these boots and I'm about due for a long term review of these, but I will say they are super comfortable, uh, unparalleled comfort. Next to that, I am wearing the Climb Outrider pants. And of course I have my Moscow uh, Basilisk jacket. And underneath that, I do have a long sleeve shirt that I was wearing because it was a little bit chilly on the bike. And this right here is a windproof jacket from North Face, uh, which works really well as a liner underneath my riding jacket. Uh, really cuts down on any kind of wind that gets through the zippers. And as far as helmet, I am wearing the Showy Hornet. Uh, very happy with this. So up here on the dash, I do have the Garmin BMW Motorrad Adventure GPS. It's so-so, not super thrilled with it. It's a little bit clunky, uh, but I leave it on here because if I don't have cell service, this is my backup option for navigating. Uh, but more frequently, what I'm using it for is it will show me the current speed limit as well as my current speed and it also shows me elevation which i kind of just like to know so i can sort of gauge you know weather and things like that and right here i have my spot x i leave this on the handlebars especially when i'm doing like off-road backcountry adventures uh, that way if i ever did get hurt i can call for help with this thing if you're doing anything in the backcountry i highly recommend that you get either one of these or the garmin inreach uh, they both do the same thing, uh, and one of the features I really like about this, and the Garmin also does this, is that I can do two-way texting. Uh, it does take a little bit longer to get through because that doesn't take priority when it's waiting for satellites to come over. However, I have heard, haven't had to test this yet, thankfully, if you hit the SOS button, that does take priority and help should be on its way pretty quickly. <laughs> Uh, one other cool thing about this is that it does come with an insurance plan for an extra, let's say, $15 a month. That covers me up to $200,000 US dollars for evacuation insurance and also vehicle recovery. I don't remember how much it covers me for with vehicle recovery, but if anything ever did happen, this is a nice piece of insurance to have. And of course, I have my sunglasses, a wind buff, which I have been using as my mask or whenever I run into a store and inside the tank bag. I've been playing around with some different things and what I've been doing lately is keeping my camera in here, my drone, my drone remote. And the reason for that is if it's a little bit easier to get to, I figured I might be more likely to actually use it. So here's the drone. Here's my camera, which I'm actually using to record, but this is the case for it. I have an iPod for when I don't have uh, internet connection to stream music on my phone. A couple pens, odds and ends, uh, some earplugs, some chapstick, tire pressure gauge, uh, drone remote, some hand sanitizer, a helmet lock for when I leave the bike, uh, key fob, stickers, business cards, things like that. Uh, I did take the water pouch out of the Nomad, which I'm kind of missing, but I had to do that in order to fit the camera. So I'm still trying to figure that setup out. Uh, but I think I'm kind of getting that dialed in. So let's move back to the duffel bag, which has my camping gear in it.
Okay, so like I said, all of my camping gear goes into this duffel bag with the exception of a few things. This is a great way to simplify setting up camp. Uh, when I pull into a campsite, all I have to do is take this one bag off. Everything that I need to set up camp is inside here. Starting with my tent. Uh, this is the Nemo Hornet UL two-person tent. I've been super happy with it. It's ultra, ultra lightweight. I am going to be swapping this out soon for something else that I've been wanting to test out for a while. Uh, so I'm going to give another tent a try for a little while at least and see how that one is. I'll be talking more about that very soon, but I'm very excited about this tent. I got some tent stakes, tent poles, my sleeping bag, which right now I'm carrying the Teton Sports Trailhead 30 degree, uh, that's 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it's synthetic fill. I've been very happy with it. It's very, very inexpensive. Uh, when it's a little bit colder, I do travel with the Leaf zero degree sleeping bag. Uh, I am going to be swapping this out too. I think these are the only two pieces of gear that are getting changed in the distant future or not too distant future. Um, but anyways, I'm very happy with this. I do highly recommend it, but I wanted to try something else out. Uh, so that'll be coming soon as well. Here is my sleeping pad. This is the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite. Uh, super small, easy to fill up, it's comfortable. Uh, my pillow, this is the Philo from Nemo. I absolutely love this piece of gear. I would say this is in like my top five favorite pieces of gear. It was a total game changer for me. It's an inflatable pillow, but it has a thin cushion sort of uh, foam insert. So when you put your head on it, it doesn't feel like an inflatable pillow that's kind of hard and stiff and, you know, just doesn't feel like a comfortable pillow. Uh, that little bit of foam really makes a huge difference and I get great night's sleep with this pillow. Uh, I got some wet wipes from Survive Wear. And I have a knit hat. Uh, it's been getting a little colder uh, during the night lately. So that comes in very handy. And also in here, uh, just to keep it safe and secure so it's not in the bottom of one of my saddlebags, is the GS911 Wi-Fi diagnostic tool for the R1200GS. Uh, this allows me to reset fault codes, uh, service reminders, and things like that. So if you do have a GS uh, with all the computers and everything on it, I would recommend carrying one of these, although I will say I've only had to use it once. But this is another good piece of insurance to have with you because if you do need it, you might be able to just reset a quick service code and avoid having to wait for a tow truck on the side of the road. So it does come in handy. They're a little bit pricey, uh, but if you factor in the cost of one tow truck ride, you're probably going to get your money back pretty quickly with this thing. And that's it for camping gear. Other than I have a little uh, repair kit for the sleeping pad in case I puncture it. And back here in the top case, this is the only case I have that is actually locking. I have two little padlocks that go right on here. And it's also the only spot that is, other than the tank bag, 100% safe if I drop the bike off-road. So this is where I keep all of my uh, sensitive electronics, you know, easily breakable things. Uh, and also my laptop. Oh, and of course up here I do have an extra fuel canister uh, with the, it's a roto pax with a little locking mount on top of it. Uh, that's something I haven't had to use too frequently, but it's there if I need it. So this is, of course, my laptop right here. And then in here, I have two smaller little cases uh, that have, you know, my gimbal, some extra batteries for the drone, my microphone, uh, an extra lens, a gimbal, did I say that? <laughs> Things like that, that's pretty much it. This is part of the gimbal anyways. I'm not gonna take all of that stuff out because it's probably not relevant to most of you. Something really cool about these Moscow bags, the backcountry panniers are these auxiliary pockets. Uh, they actually come with some dry bags, which I have strapped up to the top, uh, but they would fit right in here. Uh, I decided to use those on top to store some other things, which I'll get to in a second. Back here, I have my bike cover, uh, so I can cover the bike at night. It keeps the condensation off of it. And if I'm at a hotel, it kind of keeps prying eyes off of the bike. Uh, it's almost like an invisibility cloak. Not that I've ever had an issue, 
Uh, but it, it does seem that when the bike is covered, people don't even really seem to notice it. Uh, on this other side here, I have the dromedary water pouch. I forget how many liters it is. This is my uh, emergency, I gotta run to the bush kit. Uh, just a little plastic trowel, some toilet paper, uh, and the hand sanitizer is of course in the tank bag. Uh, also my flip-flops are in here. Shower shoes, flip-flops, whatever. Um, sometimes I wear them around camp, but I also have another pair of shoes, which I'll show you in one second. So like I said, there are these two dry bags that I have. Uh, this one has food in it, um, just a bunch of random food. Uh, sort of like a few day supply of food in here uh, that I don't generally work out of every single day. I kind of like to just have a steady supply in case I get stuck somewhere. I'm never stuck without food. You know, and once in a while I'll pull something out of here to make dinner, but typically I'm stopping, you know, just before I get to camp to get supplies for that night. So this is almost, I don't want to say an emergency kit of food, but it's not the every day, this is where I keep my food type thing. And this other one just basically has my heated gear, uh, anything cold weather related, winter gloves, a balaclava. So let's go ahead and jump into this case here as I am rapidly losing daylight. <laughs> I got my charger for phone, Bluetooth, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I really like this one because it only takes up one plug and it's got four different USB connections so i can kind of charge everything with just this one piece and however many cables i need so that comes in really handy this is my mid layer which is a down puffy jacket from patagonia got a really good deal on this it is super super warm and it packs really really small so that's great uh, my dob kit you know deodorant toothpaste soap shampoo that kind of thing Jetboil. This is my first aid kit. Uh, I took the Survivewear first aid kit and just kind of pared it down to make it a little bit smaller and easier to pack. Uh, this is of course one of my favorite pieces of gear. Uh, this is the Nano Presso from Wakako. Uh, anytime you see me making espresso around camp, this is what I'm this is what I'm using. This one has all of my chargers for the bigger stuff like the drone. Uh, things like that. So any bigger chargers go in here and extra cables as well. This is my tire pump from Dynaplug. Packs really small, works great. I did a review on that recently. And over to this other case. This is all of my clothes in a packing cube, which these things come in so handy. I've been raving about these things for the last three years. Uh, and in here, like I said, this never really changes. I have one pair of pants. One pair of shorts, another long sleeve shirt, two t-shirts, and that's it as far as clothes other than my socks and underwear, which typically, like I said, I have a three to four day supply of those, which is right here. Uh, and this is the bag for my dirty laundry. Like I said, I like to keep this as small as possible uh, so that it's not just sitting in my side case, stinking up everything else. Got a pair of shoes, which normally I'm traveling with a pair of hiking shoes, but because this trip was more of a social trip and I knew I wasn't going to be doing a ton of hiking, I'd just be kind of hanging out with friends, I brought these more comfortable shoes instead. This is a new chair, sort of a stool thing I've been trying out just to see if I could trim down the pack size of my chair. Uh, iPad for uh, reading books and things like that around camp. My headlamp, uh, it's USB rechargeable, super bright. Uh, really, really love that this is rechargeable so I don't have to worry about remembering batteries. This is a rain jacket for around camp. Uh, just a waterproof, pretty lightweight windbreaker type deal. Uh, so yeah, if it rains around camp, I'm covered and I don't have to wear my riding jacket. These are all of my tools for the bike. Anyways, that is everything that I have packed with me for a long moto trip. Hopefully this helps you guys out if you're planning a trip of your own to kind of give you a general idea of what type of stuff you might need. I will leave a link in the description box down below to all the gear I talked about, as well as a couple of reviews on specific pieces of gear that I mentioned in this video. 
Anyway, that is it for today. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell, all that good stuff. And I'll leave a playlist right over here in case you guys want to watch more videos from me. And I'll see you in the next one. Ride safe.